In this video, we're going to be working on combining like terms and the distributive property. Right now, you see you have some tiles, and um, there's longer ones, and then there's the smaller squares. What you need to know is that the smaller squares right here, these are um, units. So the yellow are positive. I guess I should bring this over here and say, you know, that one of these is a positive one and if it's a, a red one it's a negative one this is a positive x uh, let's see here let's pull this over and this is a negative x okay so let's see if I can erase that jazz right there that's a positive one so you need to make sure and have those written down so you know the difference in them Okay, let me erase that. If you missed it, go back and um, review the video. Now, the first thing I want you to do is to um, write down what you see. Okay, in this first case, what I see is I see four positives and three negative x's. So, negative 3x, three negatives, and one positive x. Now, this is, this is my unsimplified unsimplified expression now if we want now we need to go and try and simplify it well a positive takes away a negative a positive unit takes away a negative unit positive takes it have to be the same shape okay so these cancel out so then you talk about what do you have well when you look here you have four minus 3. Well, here's your 4, minus 3, and 4 minus 3, that's a 1. Then here, what do you have left? Well, I have 2 um, negative x's, so it's minus 2x. How do I get that? It's negative 3x plus 1x, plus because this is positive. So this is my simplified version. To check this in the calculator, you would put the original, let's see if I can get the right one, the original problem into y1, which you believe the answer is into y2. So if I go up over here, let's see, let me bring up my calculator here. And you really want to make sure that you're simplifying correctly. <clears throat> Takes a little bit of time for this to load. So let's see if I can... There we go. And bring this back up. Okay, so you'll press Y equals. You'll put what you think the original answer is, which, so let me clear this. I've got 4 minus 3X. Oh, let's see, there's the X. Minus 3 plus X. And then go down into Y2 and put what you think the answer is. So I'll put 1 minus 2X. Now you're going to press second graph. The way when it's a, an expression like this, there's no equal sign. The way you know you're right is if these two columns are all the same. See how they say 7, 7, 5, 5, 3, 3, 1, 1? All of those are the same. So when you're correct, when you're correct, let's see if I draw my columns here x y1 y2 all these numbers not just one spot all these numbers are the same so all y1 equals y2 okay so let's try let's look at the next one here's the next thing now it says what do you see when you go to write this with what do you see you see a positive one a positive one x a negative one a negative 1x. Now, this is the unsimplified version. If you simplify it, we do that to simplify. Let's see here. So simplify means to um, to take away the zero pairs. So to remove the zero pairs. 
So that means that a positive 1 takes away a negative 1. Well, that makes sense because 1 minus 1 is 0, so they go away. I have a positive x minus a negative x. They cross each other out. And so what my answer would be is 0. Now to check this, let's see if I move this over here. I need to go to y equals. I put this original 1 into y1. So I'm going to put 1 plus x minus 1 minus 1x. And in y2, I'm going to put what I think the answer is. The answer is 0. So now I press second graph. See how these are all 0, all y1 and y2 are the same? Then that means that we are correct. Okay, so the next one. Let's go to the next problem. Pause the video. Write down what you see and then simplify. Right here I see negative 3x's. Here I have two positives. One negative and three positive x's. I, when I have three positive x's, I go ahead and write plus. Remember, this is my unsimplified version. Now, if I wanted to, I could eliminate zero pairs by a positive takes away a negative. That's a zero pair right there. A positive takes away a negative. Now, do I have any more? Yes, I do. I have a positive here. <clears throat> takes away a negative. Positive. Takes away a negative. Well, what do I have left? I just have this one unit. So my answer is 1. Well, that makes sense because I have negative 3 and a positive 3x. Those cancel out. 3 minus 3 is 0. Then 2 minus 1 is 1. So now you want to make sure you go to the calculator. Go to y equals. Put into y1 negative 3x plus 2 minus 1 plus 3x. That all goes in, then simplify goes into y1 and what you believe the answer is goes into y2. That's the simplified version is what the answer is. Second graph. All y1 and y2 are the same so that means that you are correct. Next one right here. So right here, pause the video. Let's see if I pull these up just a little bit. Pause the video and come back and see if you can come up with the right answer. In this first one, I'm going to circle my x's. I have negative 4x plus 3x, or 3 minus 4, which is negative 1x. Now, negative x, or you can write it as negative 1x. Both of them mean the same thing. So then I put 3, negative 3 plus 3, well that's 0, so there's my answer. So what you should have done was go to the calculator, press y equals. Let's clear it. Press 3x minus 3 minus 4x plus 3. And then go down into y2 and put in there negative x. We're going to press second graph. See how 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, all of these are the same. Then you should, then you know that you are correct. Next, right here, you would have put your x's together right here. 5 plus 2, that's 7x. Negative 3 plus 2, that's minus 1. So again, to check your answers, you put the, the original into y1, the answer into y2. So the next one down here, I'm going to circle all of my x's right here. I go through, circle all my x's. I get 3 minus 3 is 0 plus 1x. So I get an x. Then I put all these together. 2 plus 4 is 6 minus 1 plus 1. Next one, circle all my x's. So here I see 2 minus 3. That, these two together right here give me negative 1x. Then with this one, that makes them cross out. So all my x's just went away. Now I have this right here, which is negative 2 or minus 2. Checking them the same way. Original problem into y1, answer into y2. Next one. 
Let's see if I had any problems down here so I can pull them up. Yep, I sure do. So let me pull these up. Right now, you have these four problems, so I would pause the video and um, find the answers and see how you did. Right here, I'm going to put my X's together. And I've got 4 minus 2, which is 2X. Then my one unit right here, plus 1. To check your answer, you should be putting the original into Y1, what you think the answer is into Y2. So when I come here, I'm going to go to Y equals. I'm going to put in there 4X minus 2X plus 1. And I'm going to go down here into Y2 and put what I think the answer is. 2x plus 1. Second graph. The, the way you know you are correct is because all of Y1 and Y2, all of these numbers are the same. Next one, right here, I look, I'm, I'm going to underline my x's. That's all I've got here. So 2x plus 3x, that equals 5x. So now you would go in your calculator, put the original problem into Y1, answer into Y2. So I would come here. I'll move this over now. I'll go to Y equals, clear this out, and put 3x plus 2x. And now I'll go down to Y2 and put 5x in here. Second graph. Now, in this case, I know I'm correct because all these numbers in Y2, these two columns match each other. This is the way you check when you're using expressions, not equations. So now on this next one, my X's, there's only 2X, so I put 2X. These two go together. 4 minus 2 is 2 plus 2. You would check it by putting the original into Y1, answer into Y2. So I come down here. Go to y equals, put in there 4 minus 2 plus 2x, and then I go down here into y2 and I put 2x plus 2. Now I press second graph and I make sure I'm correct. Well, all both of these columns are the same. All the numbers in y1 and y2 are the same. The next one. I again, I'm, I like to circle my X's or box my X's to make sure I keep them separate. Negative X plus 2 is 1X. 1 plus 1 is 2X. So I have 2X. Then I put my numbers together here. 4 or 3 plus 1 is 4. Minus 4 is 0. So my answer is just 2X. Okay, now this is different than the um, <clears throat> combining like terms because now what do you see? Right here I see 1, 2, 3. I see 3x's plus 2. I see one set of those and now I see two sets of those. So what I see is two sets, so this is two sets of 3x plus 2. That's what I just circled. Now, to write what my answer is, what do I see all together? Well, all together I see 6x's plus 4. Well, the way you're originally, what you're going to do is you're going to get problems like this. This is called the distributive property. And in this case, you're going to see this. And what you do is what I call hippity-hoppity distributive property. But it's funny because some of my students, they, they call it hippity-hoppity. But it's distributive property. But we call, I just call it hippity-hoppity just for um, something to, to help you remember. 2 times 3 is 6. Then you take two 6x and you take 2 times the other term. 2 times 2 is 4. And there's my answer. Now to check, you do the same thing. You go to y equals. You put the original problem into y1, which you believe the answer is into y2. So again, I come over here. I go to y equals. And I'm going to put in there. 2 parentheses, 3x 
plus 2, and I go down to y2 and put in what I think the answer is, 6x plus 4. Second graph. Same thing, I look to make sure these two columns are the same because you're not just looking for one spot, you're looking where the whole column is the same because it's we're, we don't have any equal signs. This is just simplifying expressions. Okay, so the next one. In this case, what do you see? I see a negative x and two positives. Well, I see one group. There's two groups. So I put a parenthesis around this, and I see two groups. Well, you can look right here and see you have negative 2x plus 4. The way you're getting that is by taking 2 times negative x, which gives you negative 2x, 2 times 2, which is 4. So there's your answer, and you would check it again the same in the calculator. Next, what do you see? I see two x's and four negatives, minus four. <clears throat> I see one, two groups. So I'll put a parenthesis and put the two right here. See, you'll put outside here, you'll put however many groups of those that you see. To find your answer, you can count up your tiles, or you go two times two which is 4x, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Well, there it is, 4x minus 8. Now, right here, I'm going to bring up the other two that are down here. I want you to pause the video and come back and see if you can come up with the right answer. Please make sure that you're checking in the calculator. On the first one, you would have done 2 times x, 2x, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Again, to check, stressing the check because you do not want to um, move on unless you know that they are correct. I will clear out what I have in my calculator. And in Y1, I will put in there 2 parentheses, X minus 2. Oop, I did two of them there. Where's my little mouse thing? Two parentheses x minus two, and then in y two put what you think the answer is two x minus four. Second graph. I know I'm right because all of y one and y two are the same. Next one. Here we go. I have oh now I can't find my mouse on here. Three times x is three x. Three times one. Well, it doesn't want to help me right here. Let's see if I can find my place here. Plus 3. The next one, right here, 2 times x, 2x, two, 2 times 1, plus 2. <clears throat> next one, 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. That's what your answer should have been. So now to go over here, let's do the next ones. Let me pull these up a little bit. Pause the video. Come back and see how you did. Right here. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x. Now on this one right here, this is, see how that has that negative sign right there? Let's see here. It's a negative 1. So I take negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Or you can write it negative x minus 2. Both ways are correct. The next one, you would have taken 4 times 3, which is 12x. Then you would have 4 times negative 1 which is minus 4. 12x minus 4. Next one here, you would have negative 2 times x, negative 2x, negative 2 times 1, negative 2. That doesn't look very good here. Let's try this. Negative, two, two, two. negative 2x minus 2. Okay, now when we try and put them all together, uh-oh, 
let's see here. Let me go up here. Now this is when you put them all together. And you have both the distributive property and combining like terms. So in this case, uh, the first thing you always do is a distributive property because in um, order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the P is for parentheses, so you always start there. 3 times X is 3X. Three, 3 times 2 is 6. So plus 6. And then I just bring down the plus 9. I just bring that down here. Now in this step, I go ahead and I combine the things that go together. Here's the combining like terms. So I get 3X plus 15. To check on this one, it is the exact same thing. You put the original into Y1, which you think the answer is into Y2, and you're looking for all of Y1 and Y2 to be the same. So on the next one right here, 6 times X is 6X. 6 times 2 is 12. Just bring down these other ones, minus 9x, minus 10. Now I combine my like terms. I'm going to put my x's. Oop, I'm off on that circle. I put my x's together. I get negative 3x, and then I put my units, 12 minus 10, plus 2. The next one, down here, let's do the distributive property again. Now remember, this is a negative 1. So I have to multiply these, but see how this negative 6 is out front? The biggest mistake is that people, if you made, oops, well, I guess, sorry, I erased that. If people make a mistake, they're going to try and take negative 6 times all of this. Well, if you notice, what's in front of it is this parenthesis, or is that negative sign right there? That's a negative 1. So really what you're doing, let's see if I can bring this down here. What you're doing is you're going to bring down, oh, where'd it go? You're going to bring down the negative 6, and then you're going to take this minus 1, and you're going to multiply by negative 1 to get negative x minus 10. Now combine the like terms, put the negative 6 and the negative 10 together. You get negative 16 minus x, or you can write it negative x minus 16. Either way is correct. The next one. Again, the first thing you're doing is the parentheses. So I'm going to bring the x down here because that's totally outside the parentheses. Then I have 4 times x, which is plus 4x. 4 times 4, which is plus 16. Well, you're not done because we still have x's that need to go together. Right here. Whoa. I have 5x plus 16. Here are, let's see, a couple more. These are the last four problems. So right here, let's think. As you're looking at this and trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, you would take 5 times x, 5x. Let's see here. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Just bring down that 3, plus 3. So now, put these together. I get 5x minus 12. Remember to check. Original problem into y1, what you think the answer is into y2, and you're going to press second graph. Next one. When you did this, you should have taken 2 times 2, which gave you 4. 2 times 2x, which is 4x. Then you have minus 3x plus 1. Those just come down because they don't have any parentheses with them. So now, put your x's together. 4 minus 3 is 1x. Then you have 4 plus 1, which is 5, plus 5. You, or you can write it x plus 5. Heck, you could even write it 5 plus x. All of those ways are correct. Next, down here on this next one. You would have taken, now the biggest mistake, look and see on your paper. Let's see if I, let me go ahead and erase this here. We should already have this down. I need a little bit more room here. Did you go and did you take 7x times each one of these things? If you did, that's not the correct thing to do. Remember I said that this 7x just comes, let's see right down here, 7x 
This is a minus one. Oh, geez. Okay, my pin. I'm just not having a good time with this pin here. There's a negative one right here. So I say negative one times x, which is negative six x. Negative one times negative two, which is positive two, and then plus one. So now I put together my x's. Seven minus six is one x. My units go together, that is plus three. The last one right here that you should have done, two times x, two x, two times three. Well, let's see here. I'm really getting frustrated with this pin. Do to do. I'll go there and try and give myself some more room. All right. Two times x is two x. Two times three is six. And then I have plus four x. Next, I put my x's together. That is six x plus 6. And this video is just working on simplifying expressions. Again, as a reminder, I want to make sure that you remember that when you have things like where there is no equal sign, this is an expression. And when you check expressions, you still put them into y1 and y2, and you still press second graph. But when you go to check on an expression, you're looking to see where all of y1 equals all of y2. All y1 equals y2. Now the difference of that is when we have an equation, which is what we've worked on before. When you have an equation and you're checking it, remember the equation is, let's see, 2x plus 1 equals 9. In this case, you put the left-hand side into y1, the right-hand side into y2, then you press second graph. And here, you're looking for the one spot where y1 and y2 are the same. So, let's see, it'd be, for example, I'd have 4, 9, 9. There would be only one spot where y1 equals y2. Only one or y1 equals y2 and that's how you know you're right when you deal with an equation.